This morning is the start of the Supreme Court case We're involving two farmers from Kojanup. Steve Marsh is taking his neighbour Michael Baxter to court over him losing his organic certification on his farm. He's lost over 70% of his organic certification because his neighbour Michael Baxter's canola blew onto his farm. So the Montecito canola contaminated his canola. And our farmers today need our help because our laws have let them down. Our laws, which have allowed a corporation to market GM to the detriment of a farmer's choice to grow non-GM, have let us down. One of our members went over to Canada and interviewed people, and they say, the farmers say, it's not our crop. We get told what to grow, we just have to do the work and foot the bill because they tell us when to spray it. We don't think it needs spraying but we have to use their chemicals so they pick up the chemical, deliver it and say spray it and we have to spray it when they do. So we become their slaves to, to the corporate company that just wants to make money out of farmers. Once you start applying these poisons on this scale, uh, your farmland is so devastated that uh, to convert to organic, for, for example, is uh, economically difficult. The case of Steve Marsh versus Michael Baxter will help decide if it is even possible to revert Western Australian farms back to being organic after the contamination has occurred. Currently, the non-GM farmer is expected to be liable for the price difference if grain is downgraded to GM, for recall and contamination cleanup, if caused, for the GM testing costs throughout the supply chain, for the additional closed loop segregation costs, and in some cases, even expensive GM user fees due to end point royalty arrangement. Mr Marsh is seeking $85,000 in damages, but this three week long Supreme Court trial is already costing farmers and taxpayers millions of dollars and will set the precedent for many cases and possible class actions to come. So who is testing the safety of genetically modified grain in Western Australia? Predominantly Monsanto does the trial work. Um, there is a lot of good faith shown by farmers when they grow to genetically modified crops. Farmers need to sign some fairly stringent uh, contract, contracts and paperwork. Essentially you've got first off for trials and things like that, you've got the gene technology regulator whose powers really are very limited and it's basically limited to trials and things like that. And then you've got Fazans which is the food, um, food standard Australia and New Zealand and they're the people that regulate, uh, essentially the main regulators. And what happens is that they basically just believe the company, while they say they read some of the literature, they actually believe the company testing. So the companies who are developing this test it and say, yeah, it's okay, and Fazans essentially believes them. Every single independent study conducted on the impact of genetically modified food shows that it damages organs, it causes infertility, it causes immune system failure, it causes holes in the GI tract, it causes multiple organ system failure. It's no surprise that Monsanto are leading the charge here when they want to sell and flog as many chemicals as possible. It's in their interest to flog those chemicals. It's in their interest to put GMOs and make them dependent on chemicals and to make our global farming systems dependent on chemicals. What if we could produce more yield on the same amount of land, squeeze more water from a single raindrop, conserve natural resources while caring for the environment. Monsanto is the company that told us that PCBs were safe. They told us that Agent Orange was safe. They told us that DDT was safe. And now they're in charge of telling us if their own genetically modified foods are safe. The reason why we have 170 million acres of genetically engineered corn and soybeans and cotton and canola oil and sugar beets in the United States is because it doesn't have to be labeled. This case has got the potential to push the responsibility, the liability for GM contamination back onto the GM farmer and back onto the GM industry. And we must remember that our right to eat GM food is equal to the farmer's right to grow GM food.
if Steve can't grow it, we can't eat it. And the public largely around the world doesn't want to eat GM food. It's totally about freedom of choice. The GM proponents, they've argued for their right to have the choice to grow and use GM or this tool in the toolbox. All I'm asking is for the same right to be able to produce a GM free product, which we've traditionally done for years. I think that's very important because as farmers, we should have the right to run our business and produce the products that we choose to. I think that people have a right to choose what they want, uh, to eat and to grow, and um, basically Steve Marsh has had that choice taken away from him. So I'm supporting Steve Marsh because he represents all of us in fighting for our right to choose. Steve Marsh, I am Steve Marsh, I am Steve Marsh, I am Steve Marsh. I We're using the hashtag I am Steve Marsh because that's it in a nutshell. What happens to Steve happens to us. It's synonymous, it's connected. We are symbiotic. Uh, so yeah, people, we want people to take photographs, um, even little YouTube videos and submit it to YouTube with that hashtag, put it on Instagram. Grab a photo of yourself with a sign in front of you saying um, hashtag I'm Steve Marsh. Put it on Facebook, put it on your website, put it on your newsletters, send it to your friends and family. And that's been the most successful part of it is the social media outreach. The Safe Food Foundation is coordinating the fundraising for Steve's court case. Uh, it is just we the people that are helping fund this. And I've and seen people coming up on the street today just giving you money. Very, very generous. We've had some, how, I haven't added it up, but thousands and thousands, many, many thousands of people across the world have donated. I think there's people from 30 or more countries have donated to Steve's case, from the countries I haven't even heard of. And people who are saying, I'm on a pension, I can't donate any money this week, but next week when my pension comes in, I'm going to donate money then. Uh, it, it almost you know, it upsets me, actually. Um, the level of support that's come in and the way that people have, um, have supported Steve. Pay off those losers we elect to lead. Steal them from the mouths that women to feed. Enslaving the very clothes upon my back. Hey, I feel the sting, but I hear no crack. They want the public to sit down and not think about what happened before this, this uh, piece of meat got on my plate? What happened before this glass of milk sat on the table? We have an ethical responsibility, I believe, not just to other humans and to the future generations. We have an ethical responsibility to all living creatures. The FDA has received over a million comments from citizens demanding labeling of GMOs. 90% of Americans agree. So why no labeling? I'll give you one reason, the influence and the corruption of the political process by Monsanto. It shouldn't be about uh, the government getting money out of saying yes for a, 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 you know, yes to GM. That, that's technically, you would, you would say that's a legal bribe. The law is quite silent on an issue such as this, which is, uh, which is why we're off to the Supreme Court to find a judgment as to whether uh, farmers have rights against other farmers' contamination, whether they have rights against Monsanto. Uh, the situation is very unclear, which is why this is such a significant case. It's going around the world. I have people in Canada and in America and New Zealand that are, that are following this. So there's a huge backing that really, really wants Steve to, to win this for everyone. Americans have a right to know if their food is genetically engineered. It's time for labeling. It's time for people to know how their food is being produced. In allowing Monsanto patents over genetically modified seeds, are we in fact allowing them to play God? It is community pressure that will aid in preserving a genuine freedom of choice. It is the community pressure on, that will change the laws. Governments follow community leadership. And the only way we are going to get these laws changed is by direct community action. Countries and regions that have successfully banned Monsanto's genetically engineered crops are... Lucy Nicholl reporting for Undercurrent.